Hello everybody and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. And uh, I created today's video clip and the accompanying article because I get questions all the time about the blood type diet. It's been a long time since I've written anything about it or talked about it. So I have a lot of things to say about this. And we'll start with the guy who wrote the blood type book, Peter Dodamo is a naturopath who claims that people should eat very specific diets according to their individual blood types. He has written a series of best-selling books, starting with Eat Right for Your Type, which has sold 7 million copies, I checked that out, and Live Right for Your Type. And then there are all kinds of books after that, I think there are about 18 of them. The blood type brand now includes cookbooks, skincare products, test kits, protein bars, and believe it or not, teas and beverages that are appropriate for your blood type. Dadama has profited handsomely from all of this, but I think the $64,000 question and the reason people usually write to me is, is there anything to this? There sure is a lot of chatter. Does any of it make any difference? Well, on his website, I think that's always the best place to start. I went to the about section. Who is Peter Dadamo? And here's what it says. This is a quote. Peter Dodamo is a naturopathic physician who is also an author, researcher, educator, Ivesian, amateur horologist, budding software developer, and this is interesting, air-cooled enthusiast. He's considered a world expert in glycobiology, principally the ABO blood groups and the secretor FUT2 polymorphisms. Now, um, horology is the scientific study of time and the art of making time pieces. I was unable to find a definition of Ivesian that most people agree upon, but some people think it means a follower of Charles Ives, but I, I digress. Let's just get back to Peter Dodamo. So basically what his deal is all about is he uses the ABO system for classifying blood types, which are determined by the presence or absence of two genetically close antigens, A and B, which are attached to the surface of red blood cells. The rationale for his dietary recommendations is based on the idea that since there are some studies that show that there is a relationship between certain blood types and health risks, it therefore follows that it is beneficial for people to both eat particular diets and practice particular lifestyle habits, which are specific to their individual blood type. There are no references, by the way, accompanying the statements made on this section of the website. The website provides basic dietary guidelines for each blood type, along with common characteristics of people who have those particular blood types. So this is where things get really interesting. People with type O blood have exceptional strength, lean physiques, and productive minds. They are also prone to insulin resistance, sluggish thyroid, and inflammatory conditions. The Damo advises that type O's must eat right and exercise to maintain a healthy weight and manage stress. Apparently, the other blood blood types don't have to eat right and exercise. Okay, apparently their advice is exempt from this sage advice. So type, e's, type O's should eat a high protein diet with meat, fish, vegetables, and fruit, and limit grains, beans, and legumes. Weight loss depends on avoiding wheat, corn, lentils, kidney beans, and dairy, and specifically including kelp, seafood, red meat, kale, spinach, broccoli, and olive oil. We all know what great weight loss foods olive oil and red meat are, right? Individuals with type A blood naturally high, have higher levels of the stress hormone cortisol, according to Dodamo, which means that stress reduction needs to be a major part of their type A lifestyle. The rest of us could be stressed out beyond recognition, but boy, you type A's back there, you better, you better pay attention. Calming exercises such as yoga are recommended, which can reduce the type A predisposition to cardiovascular disease. Type A individuals should eat a vegetarian diet with tofu, some seafood, grains, legumes, fruit, and turkey. Weight loss depends on avoiding meat, dairy, kidney beans, lima beans, wheat, and corn, while specifically eating olive oil, soy, seafood, vegetables, and pineapple. <laughs> um, so I'm trying to keep a straight face here, but I think you can see there are some pretty interesting issues with it. Type B individuals are prone to depression, insulin resistance, and hypothyroidism when they are out of balance. Other people can be out of balance apparently without having those things happen to them. And so daily exercise that quote engages the mind and body such as golf and tennis is recommended in order for the type B to thrive. Type B is a balanced omnivore, whatever that is, and should eat dairy, grains, fruit, vegetables, fish, seafood, select beans, and legumes. The key to weight loss is avoiding chicken, corn, lentils, peanuts, and wheat while making sure you eat copious amounts of greens, eggs, venison, liver, and drinking licorice tea. <laughs> Additional exercise recommendations include hiking, cycling, tennis, and swimming in order to keep those poor type B folks in balance. 
Now type AB people are rare folks who are prone to develop autoimmune disease and age-related cognitive disorders. In order to remain healthy, type ABs need to burn off excess adrenaline to bring the mind and body into focus. These people need to eat lamb, fish, dairy, tofu, beans, legumes, grains, vegetables, and fruit. Weight loss depends on avoiding chicken, corn, kidney beans, and buckwheat, and eating tofu, seafood, greens, and kelp. Yoga, tennis, and cycling are recommended for the type AB blood type. Now, in addition to this rambling and I think insane and completely disconnected list of foods to eat and avoid for mental and physical health and weight loss, each blood type section features supplements, cookbooks, and pocket guides to facilitate adhering to the particular blood type and associated diet and uh, lifestyle recommendations. The Damo has conducted no formal studies showing that his theories about blood types and food choices is correct, but like others who promote unproven dietary theories, he puts forth stories of people who've recovered from all kinds of conditions while apparently eating right for their type, and this is the evidence that his diet works. His articles, books, and website are populated with meandering and unsubstantiated hypotheses about various mechanisms that are at play. Independent research groups have looked for proof that his ideas promote better health and concluded that they don't. So one research group looked at 16 articles that presented data related to blood type diets and concluded that, quote, no evidence currently exists to validate the purported health benefits of blood type diets. Dadamo's response to this, he posts this statement on his blog, and I'll read it to you. Not surprisingly, they didn't find any. Had they contacted me prior to the study, I could have saved them a lot of extra work. I've looked high and low, and I've also never found one. That's how original the theory is. In other words, he was would have saved them the trouble. There's no evidence to support this. I'm such a pioneer. I'm talking about something that there's no evidence to support. I mean, i got to give the guy something. He's got brass ones to put this forth as a response. Another research study involved 1,455 young and mostly healthy adults and also concluded that the blood type diet had nothing to do with health improvement. The authors concluded, quote, findings do not support the blood type diet hypothesis. Now, Dodonno answers his critics who cite studies like these by basically uh, seeding their point. He states on his website, that the blood type diet theory is currently unproven by rigorous scientific study is not argued. <laughs> Hopefully in time this can be rectified by studies which accurately and comprehensively prove or disprove the hypothesis. Now, the problem is that people take this as if it's the gospel. I'm going to tell you some things in a minute that are just going to really shock you. Well, Dodamo has made millions of dollars from his books and his products and all that sort of thing and, and a large practice. Nothing wrong with that, but he seems to have little interest in investing any of that money in conducting the types of studies that he claims would be required in order to prove his hypothesis. Now, in his first book, which was published in 1996, he wrote, and this is a quote from the book, even now as I write this, I'm beginning the eighth year of a 10-year trial on reproductive cancer as using blood type diets. My results are encouraging. So far, the women in my trial have double the survival rate published by the American Cancer Society. By the time I release the results in another two years, I expect to make it scientifically demonstrable that the blood type diet plays a role in cancer remission. It's over 20 years since that time, and he still has not made that data available. And so um, it, it's, it, it's just ridiculous. In the meantime, he insists that there is no data to support it, which just does nothing but point out what a great imaginative guy he is. His website features a list of, quote, science writings and software by Peter Dinamo. So I went to that link, and it includes a couple of medical textbooks. I put air quotes around that that he's authored. Some articles authored by him, none of which are published in peer-reviewed journals, bioinformatics software, and research blogging, whatever research blogging is. It's hard to believe that such ridiculous claims are believed by consumers, but what is really frightening is the number of health professionals who bought into this rubbish. Dodamo's appeared on the Dr. Oz show. I guess that shouldn't surprise us. Dr. Oz has had every quack in the country on his show, and he's promoted every quackery product on his, on his show. But he features um, on his website uh, a four-part interview with Dodamo. Uh, on um, Dodamo's website, he states that he was awarded Physician of the Year by the American Association of Naturopathic Physicians in 1990. He is adjunct clinical professor for both Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine, Tempe, Arizona, and the National College of Naturopathic Medicine in Portland, Oregon. 
Now, the day I was getting ready to write this article, I was reading a journal that I look at. I, it has some interesting stuff in it, but most of it's not peer-reviewed. I'd say maybe 20% of the information in it is worth looking at, and the rest of it has to be discounted, and that's the Townsend letter. So anyway, this month's edition of the Townsend Letter featured an article about the University of Bridgeport College of Naturopathic Medicine. Now, Dadamo doesn't list anything about this on his website. It states that the university began collaborating with Dadamo several years ago, and this has resulted in an entire program being built around his hypothesis. And you heard me right, this is a naturopathic medical school. The university now has, quote, a center of excellence in generative medicine, which is, quote, to more fully understand the self-healing behaviors from the basis of naturopathic philosophy and inform treatments for personalized care. The university is so invested in Dodamo's mythology that it has invested a beautifully restored Victorian house uh, to house the center. The university also boasts that the education of students is, quote, greatly enhanced by his presence in the classroom and clinic and states that, quote, we are thrilled that we are able to offer our students the opportunity to learn from someone who has been called one of the most creative scientists in the Western world. Uh, the English translation of that is, I just make stuff up. Okay, and who is a pioneer in our profession. Naturopathic students, and this is unbelievable, are supervised by Dodamo during their personalized medicine shift while watching Dodamo research his theories about personalized nutrition. Um, I don't think much of naturopathic education, and after him listing, uh, his listings on his website is being associated with two of the schools and this school promoting him, uh, I think I'm right to refer to myself as a recovering naturopath and to discount people who have those qualifications. Um, it is true, as I mentioned earlier, that Dodama is one of the most creative scientists in the Western world, mostly because he just refuses to join the scientific community and he just makes things up. When real scientists using real scientific methods report that there's no evidence to support his theories, he counters that they're right. But this is not because his ideas are wrong. Instead, Dodamo says that lack of evidence shows what a pioneering guy he really is. The medical journals and the scientific community haven't caught up with him yet. While this argument, while weak under any circumstances, may have been somewhat viable in 1996 when he wrote his first book, it has absolutely no validity 20 years later. There is absolutely no excuse for this guy to have published nothing about what he's talking about uh, after all this time. He hasn't provided any research conducted by him or anybody else that substantiates his hypotheses. He most likely feels little pressure to do so since he's granted legitimacy by universities like Bridgeport and naturopathic associations, which don't seem to think evidence is much important either. The alternative health and naturopathic communities damage themselves considerably when they embrace this type of nonsense. While critical of traditional medicine, health professionals in these camps veer even further from the scientific evidence and demonstrate that they're willing to base practice decisions based on any interesting idea, regardless of how unsubstantiated it might be. Furthermore, they're unwilling to give up on these unproven ideas when uh, proof fails to materialize. Consumers should proceed with caution with consulting with all practitioners, and I would say particularly those who are associated with naturopathic, integrative, holistic, complementary and alternative, functional, all those terms that apply to alternative health practitioners. I think that they're far more dangerous actually than traditional doctors, and that's saying something. Well, that's all for today. Um, some of you might be thinking, I wonder what she thinks of Dodamo and the blood type diet. I know sometimes I'm hard to read, but in case you didn't get it, I think it really is nothing but nonsense. And the fact that this guy's been able to deceive so many healthcare professionals should tell you why the consumer must beware. That's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think might enjoy watching it, and I'll be back to you next week with more news.